Yeah, with David Coleman, engineer from uh, Mazda North America, and now we are in the second vehicle for this program. It'll be tighter. There's only one camera now, right? That's <laughs> yeah, exactly. all the room we have. <laughs> we don't have room for a lot of that, a lot of uh, extra things. But this car, I mean, this is one of the most, can we say, the like, most successful car in the history of Mazda because we have still what a million of them. A million of them. Yeah. Just like celebrating that uh, milestone, right? So. We're gonna do a little uh, drive here around uh, the hotel in San Diego. Let me adjust the seat because even though the car is small, I mean I'm already way back. Here. Yeah, it's got uh, enough room for me. I'm six exactly. two. Yeah, it I'm, fits I'm, me perfectly. I think uh, most of cars are built for people like my size, five seven, right. five eight. Like I fit perfectly in every every car pretty much. So um, let's talk about this one because this is the second version of this car, right? Because right. Uh, the soft top came out, the new generation for the soft top came out a last year, a year and a half ago. Yeah. yeah, it's doing great, I heard. Yeah, really well, really well. So this one is a hard top, and which gives Lee gives it a completely different, not only look but also a different feeling. Because obviously now we have the windows open. If we put your arm there, we close the windows. Like really quiet. Yeah, it, as a as a daily driver car, if you're on the yeah. freeway and you don't want to listen to the truck right next to you, it's really nice and civilized. And then yeah. you put the top down and right back to an open sports car. Speaking of which, you can do it uh, at the speeds of uh, under six miles an hour. on the right. Stand, right? Yeah. So let's try here. Well, we have a stop sign here. We can do it. Oh, it's the other way. That's up. Yeah. It's up like up that. Up to go down? Yeah, I know, it's confusing. And then down I, to I think come it's because you would go up with your hand when you open it. I don't know, I would have gone the other way. But. Me too. Actually, <laughs> oh, I, I think like an engineer, finally. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> At least in one thing. There is, there's the beep, so we're, we're set. Changing or putting a hard top on this kind of car, since uh, the other one has the soft top much, much lighter, what are the challenges there? Well, we're really sensitive to weight in this car of course yeah. and so this top adds about 100 pounds which is not much considering what it does but mm -hmm. in a car that only weighs 2300 pounds 100 pounds is pretty significant yeah um so we um we actually retuned the whole suspension and steering system to try to, to work right with the little extra weight on the back um and it also gave us an opportunity to really fine-tune some handling characteristics that we were trying to get right um you know when, the, when you first develop the car, it's fresh, everything is new, uh, and the, when you've had it out for a year and a half, we've learned more about how things behave and how they react, and so I think we got even better at tuning it this time. So, so the tuning is in the suspension and all the things, but the engine and the thing remains the same. Engine's the same. Transmission yeah. the same, which is like... I and a lot of the tuning that we did to the suspension is to try to make it feel exactly the same. Oh, okay. Right? What's to, to, to mask that 100 pounds that we put on it, so yeah. So the driver it might feel like we didn't do anything, but really we did a lot of yeah. stuff to make it feel like we didn't do anything. But uh, also the hard, uh, the hard top changed uh, quite the shape of it from the outside. The look of the car is not completely different, no, but, but it very really different. really changes the sense of proportions yeah. because the, the top uh, is now so much farther back. So the, the window line seems to continue back past the, yeah. the past your head more. The trunk seems shorter. So the, the relationship between the trunk and the hood it really makes that long hood uh, feeling that makes a Longer, sports car yeah. seem like a sports car. Um, that's really accentuated with this top. And it yeah. really, really changed the character of the car. And then when you it. look at it from the back, actually, I don't know if you are going to agree with me, but I think, I don't know what happened there, but fenders go a little bit further out, it seems to me, and then like the bottom part of it is like much narrower. Am I well, right the, in that the, perception? The bottom half of the car is completely the same shape, but what when they were designing this car, they really wanted to, to make the car look as small as possible, but really to give the fenders a lot of width so it has you know, that sort of muscular sports car feeling. And yeah. so they narrowed up the top, where the top comes down, it kind of tapers down, and that the perspective between the narrow top and the wider fenders really makes the car look a lot more aggressive. Yeah, it's very different. I mean, when you have, I mean, and it's very different, again, when you see them in the auto shows and like in the, in the closed environment, and then when you see it in the, in the street, like, like the, perception like the proportions everything like look completely different i don't know why that is but uh, for me at least sometimes you see a car in the show and you say like, ah, i don't know and then you see it outside like, oh beautiful yeah you see it on the world and really yeah cool. and when you see it from the driver's seat too that's one of the best things about this car is the view over the hood you see a bunch of the hood yeah. the, sh the, sh the hood is really shapely and the way it connects with this body color uh parts on the interior yeah, you feel that like you're like completely you feel, an open car there's yeah. just just complete connection between this line and the fender line right on the other side of the windshield and it really just connects you with the car it's a great it's a great 
place to sit. So now we have the roof up. Beautiful day here in San Diego. I mean, I, I heard you had a one by bad day of weather. One Monday. day of pouring rain. Yeah, I think I, you got up. like one of the two bad days of bad weather they have in San Diego. Yeah, that's all they're allocated <laughs> each year. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so now we're gonna go a little bit on the highway. It's gonna be a little bit, obviously, a little bit more noise, but. I mean, like, such a pleasure to drive this car because, like, the connection again, like, connection actually, all your cars, the connection of the hue of the driver with the car is important. This car is even even more. This is sort of right? the most pure execution of that yeah. idea, really. The whole car is built around, around that idea of just having the car that just completely feels like it's part of you. Okay, so we're gonna go to the highway, we're gonna enjoy for a couple of miles. Okay, back in the city, I'm back on the more quieter <laughs> circumstances. Hair's a little fluffier now. Right? Well, I can't deal with that. But the hardtop version of the Miata or the MX-5 only came in the third generation. The first two were soft top and then... The first two were soft top only. We had a removable hardtop. You could just yeah, pull yeah, off by hand, that. right? Okay, yeah. Um, and the third generation, we, we had a removable hardtop available like the first year and then we came out with the power retractable hardtop and nobody bought another one of the solid uh, of the removable oh, of course not. Again. Who wants to carry yeah. stuff when you can push the button? <laughs> right. So, but the over the, the years, the, the hard top became uh, as popular as the soft top. It, it may have been even slightly over 50% uh, retractable yeah. hard top. So it became a really big part of, of the car. Um, so for this generation, of course, we had to do it again, but we wanted to, we wanted to try to take the opportunity, since we were redesigning the whole back half of the car, uh -huh. to make that top work. We should take the opportunity to make it look different, and that's why we came up with this really different design. Because if you're doing all the work, you might as well have two different designs as a result. Absolutely. From what I hear, the car's already on sale, right? I mean, yep. like the initial response has been really, really good. Yeah, we, we pre-sold a, a, a thousand of them um, in, in a special launch edition, and we uh, delivered all those already. And uh, the rest of them are rolling out to dealers already. Yeah. And uh, this car obviously has a huge loyal uh, following, so. Um, that that changes something very welcome because as you said like 50% already of the of the sales were with that so really good job with that and uh, I bet this car is already a classic right I mean, oh absolutely yeah, actually the first generation uh, Miata um, spec Miatas are starting to show up uh, as vintage racers now you can yeah. race them in SVRA as a vintage race car oh, that's super <laughs> so cool. yeah we, we've come full circle and we're now we're now a classic <laughs> that's perfect well we're gonna enjoy a classic good weather day here in uh, San Diego and uh, hopefully we'll see you again the last time we drove together we well, was all white we were in the snow in the crested that's Hill right with a uh, CX-9 so yeah. this is a little nicer weather yeah but then then maybe we have to find something in between or more extreme completely different I don't know what you can come well, up we'll with. have to do a rainstorm <laughs> next oh that's good <laughs> okay that, I like that I like yeah. um, driving this car the rain in the racetrack. Alright, let's do it. Okay, <laughs> thank you David. Alright, good to see you.